Let's talk about how to set the proper DNS settings on a network card for Active Directory. So a lot of times people make this mistake. I've seen this a lot over the years. So I thought it'd be a good idea to explain how it is you're supposed to be setting up your internet and your DNS on both your Windows server as well as your Windows client. Now we're in Windows 2012 R2, but this will work in 2016 and 2019 and also 2008 as well. So uh, if you take a look, we're on widgetllc.internal is the name of our domain. Let's go ahead and minimize that. And what we're going to do is we're going to right click on our network icon and choose Open Network and Sharing Center on our server. Let's go to where it says Change Adapter Settings. And we'll right click and go to the properties of the network card. If we double click on TCP IP version 4, we can take a look at some interesting things. And that is that the IP address is here, the subnet mask. Don't worry about the gateway. The gateway is whatever your router is uh, or firewall out to the internet. But that's not what our conversation is going to be about. So we're going to talk about the DNS server. This is where a lot of IT administrators make a mistake. So the preferred DNS server. A lot of times people will have something like this, 8.8.8.8, .8 .8 .8, which is a public DNS server, as well as their internal server. And here's the problem with that, is if you use both a public uh, DNS server and a private DNS server, then what's going to happen is whichever one responds first is going to be the one that takes control of that DNS request, where it tries to resolve a name to an IP address. And if your server is really busy, then it may not be the one that responds to the DNS request. So you'll end up getting uh, a lot of times uh, a timeout or an error when requesting resources outside of the network. So you want to do it a little differently. I'll show you how, how you got to do it. So we'll go ahead and get rid of our 8888 and we'll type in 192.168.0.1. You could also do what it, what it showed earlier, 127.0.0.1. They mean the same thing. 127 just points back to whatever IP address you are currently using, which you can see is this address at the top. So either one of those are correct. It'll be fine. If you have a second DNS server in your network, and in our case we do, then go ahead and add that as the alternate. And then if you want, you can click on Advanced and you can add additional DNS servers here. So you can add as many as you want. So let's go ahead and click OK as we leave those IP addresses the way they are. So how do people get out to the internet if you have your internal IP address set in DNS? Well, what we do is what's called DNS forwarders. So we go up to Server Manager, we go to Tools, and we go to our DNS Manager. Now this is our domain controller, so it is also a DNS server. So we're going to right click on the name of our server and go to Properties. And here we're going to go to where it says Forwarders. We'll click on Edit, and we'll type in the public address that we want to use. So it could be 8888 or 75, 75, 75, whatever it is you want to use for a public address. And you go ahead and you click OK, and you click Apply. So now here's what's going to happen. is Anytime anybody makes a request to go out to the Internet, they're first going to hit your server. The server is going to say, uh, is going to ask the question, is the resource you're trying to get to inside or is it outside? So if it's inside, it will hand back the resource such as the G drive or whatever you know, uh, shared folder they're trying to get access to. If they're trying to get it out to google.com, it will redirect it using that forwarder address. And then Active Directory will work properly. Now we also have to do this on the client side as well. So let's go to the client. If you have a DHCP server set up, then just set the uh, D DNS to be the 192.168.0.1 and .2. But if you're using a static address like we're doing here, then we're going to want to go and take a look at what that address is. So let's go ahead and type ipconfig slash all. And we can see that our DNS server is this outside address. So if I try to get to my server right now, it's going to say, hey, I can't find it because uh, the uh, server can't be found at 8888. That, you know, the Google DNS server has no idea uh, where your internal address is. So you have to change that. So what we want to do is go to Control Panel. And you also may be able to do this through System as well. Uh, but uh, Control Panel is something more people like myself are familiar with. So we'll go ahead and go there. And then we'll go from Category to Large Icons. That's just the way I prefer it. And we'll go to the Network and Sharing Center. Now we'll click on Change Adapter Settings, go to Properties, and go to where it says TCP IP 4, and go to Properties.
So here's the, where that setting is. We'll go ahead and change it. So now it's going to be the same as our uh, server's IP address that is running Active Directory. We could also put in the .2 address as well, since that's another domain controller. All right, so once that's done, we can go ahead and try to ping our server, and it should respond, and it does. So that's how you can tell whether or not you have the correct DNS server settings uh, when you set up your Windows client computers as well as your Windows server. And again, if you're using DHCP, then you just want to set this internal address in your DHCP scope when it lists your DNS servers.